I really love to eat, but only to a point. While my palate is certainly extensive, there are plenty of dishes out there that, for a variety of reasons, I simply won't touch. This hasn't stopped other countries from digging into these recipes with gusto, though. We may cringe, but people around the world are simply licking their chops. We hope you've brought your appetite, because we're counting down the top 10 weirdest foods other countries love to eat. Not every strange foreign dish stands a good chance of murdering you, but there's still plenty odd to American taste buds. The Armenian soup called kash is just that. Kash is cow meat simmered in broth and liberally seasoned with garlic, salt, and lemon juice. That doesn't sound so weird, except the cow meat in question is from the hooves. Yes, to eat kash is to eat cow feet. Even stranger is how some chefs will add pieces of cow stomach to the mixture. It's all the parts of the cow that American steak enthusiasts tend to ignore, but Armenians swear by it. In their country, kash is as much a ritual as it is a meal. Preparing it can take upwards of two days. After removing all the hair, a chef places the hooves in cold water for at least a day. This is to remove all possible dirt, impurities, and funky smell. After all, who knows what the cow stepped in. Then you simmer the hooves in water for eight hours, making sure to check in every hour to top off the water and prevent both the pot and feet from drying out. After that, you scoop out the broth and meat and serve. All the seasonings come later, added according to the diner's personal tastes. Making this long ritual even crazier is that kash is typically meant to be enjoyed in the morning as a hangover cure after a night of craziness and partying. So for a soup made of feet and stomach, chefs will often go without sleep to ensure it comes out perfectly. It kind of makes spending 10 minutes slaving over a hot George Foreman seem lame by comparison. Ever put food in the fridge and forgotten about it only to find it months later when cleaning out the fridge? You wouldn't eat that, right? If it was halkutuk, you would. Typically found in Greenland, halkutuk isn't just any shark meat. Preparers usually use meat from the Greenland shark, which is highly poisonous due to all the uric acid and trimethylamine oxide. The only way to detoxify the meat is to ferment it, and this process takes months. First, you bury the meat in a shallow hole and cover it with gravel and large stones. This helps to remove toxic fluids from the meat, but doing so takes anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks. After that, you cut the meat up into strips and hang it out to dry. It's another several months before the meat is dry enough to serve. Once it is, you remove the now browned skin, cut the meat into cubes, and eat. If you've never eaten halkutuk before, know what you're getting into. Fermented shark meat still contains a tremendously high level of ammonia, so the second you sniff it, you will likely gag, cough, and possibly dry heave. Those who get past the stench, however, insist the taste is far milder and is actually quite pleasant. So hold your nose and give it a go. The very name should be enough to put anybody off this food. Stink bugs are exactly what they sound like, insects that give off a terrible scent. Much like skunks, stink bugs emit their smell when defending themselves, and even if you like eating bugs, this might very well turn you off to the idea of eating these particular ones. Even so, they're a popular snack around Africa and countries like Taiwan. They're apparently quite spicy, and people love to eat them both alone and mixed in with other foods. But worry not, for the spice doesn't come from the stink glands. When preparing the bugs for consumption, cooks do remove the glands. Not eating the stink might make eating stink bugs more palpable, except for one other issue. You may be eating these bugs alive. In Mexico, they use a species of stink bug called the humil, and this hearty little guy can survive upwards of a week after being cooked and beheaded. So if you eat a taco sauce mix containing humil, there's a good chance those little guys are still alive and kicking. That fact might stink most of all. Chances are you've eaten clams. Perhaps you've eaten them raw, but have you ever eaten them so raw they're still bleeding? Probably not, and for good reason. Blood clams usually found around the Indian Ocean are a particular kind of clam called Tegelaca granosa, most notable for producing tons of hemoglobin. This is the chemical that gives blood its lovely red color, and blood clams being loaded with them means when you open one, that stuff will spill everywhere. While you could theoretically boil most of this liquid away, doing so means you're not enjoying blood clams the way they're meant to. 
To fans of the dish, the rawness and bloodiness is part of the appeal, so most chefs will boil them for 20 seconds maximum. This keeps all the hemoglobin and rawness of the meat perfectly intact. Fans swear by the tastiness of blood clams, but even they can't deny the inherent dangers of eating such a dish. Since there's no prep time aside from an ever so brief boiling, all sorts of viruses and bacteria a blood clam carries are still there. So feel free to eat this meal, but no, dessert may be a heaping helping of hepatitis, dysentery or worse. If you want a truly sensational soup, head to the Vietnam, Cambodia area and give white ant egg soup a shot. If you don't want to eat hundreds of ants at various stages of development, however, then maybe stay away. True to its name, white ant egg soup is comprised of white ant eggs. If you eat it, fans say, the eggs pop open in your mouth and emit a sour flavor. So if Sour Patch Kids have lost their luster, try some ant eggs instead. But that's not all. This soup also contains partial ant embryos as well as baby ants. So no matter what stage of development you like your ants, this soup has got you covered. Unless, of course, you're one of those oddballs who like to chow down on adult ants. If that's the case, you'll just have to make your own soup. While this dish may sound like something a child may invent, or perhaps an ingredient in a witch's curse, in Japan, tuna eyeballs are a real delicacy. A tuna's eyeballs are roughly the size of a tennis ball, so there's plenty to consume. When cooked, the outer part of the eye, called the sclera, becomes extra chewy and not particularly edible. However, the inside becomes quite soft and easy to drink, if that's your thing. Despite many chefs sautéing the eyeballs with flavors like soy sauce and ginger, many people report the taste as kind of bland. It sounds like the rest of tuna is far more flavorful. If you still wish to try some eyes next time you're in Japan, make absolutely sure they're cooked. Some may say you can eat the eyes raw, but doing so risks contracting all sorts of bacteria. As other foods on this list have already proven, bacteria isn't a fun part of any dining experience, so please cook your eyes before consuming them. In addition, should you try tuna eyeballs, be sure to ask for its accompanying shot called Tuna's Tears. It's a mixture of strong spirit soju and raw tuna fish lens, and it's likely to bring a tear to your eye as well. There's a chance you've eaten uni at your favorite sushi restaurant, or at least seen it on the menu. But do you know what it is? If you answer, it's a sea urchin, you're only partially correct. Uni is a sea urchin, yes, but there's only one part of the urchin that's even remotely edible. It's gonads. So if you order uni, understand you're about to eat an urchin's raw testicles. Each urchin contains five gonads, but only a small amount of urchins sport the edible kind. So when you manage to eat uni, understand you're about to consume a rare delicacy. You'll just have to get past the psychological aspect of exactly what you're eating. It's actually an incredibly versatile food, and you can find it served as sushi, sashimi, a top of bed of pasta or rice, or steamed in an eggy broth called chawanmushi. Or if you're particularly adventurous, you can simply crack open a uni like a walnut, scoop out the innards, and eat away. That is, if you're okay with eating a living creature's reproductive organs while it slowly dies in front of you. Millions upon millions of people enjoy sushi and sashimi, but most would turn and run at the extreme version of that, a Japanese dish called odoridon, where you essentially eat an octopus alive. To prepare odoridon, a chef will take an octopus or squid and chop its head off. Then they'll immediately place the raw corpse upon a bed of noodles, rice, and salmon eggs. That's it. Then they bring the freshly dead octopus to your table and it's time to eat. As you might have guessed, a headless octopus isn't actually alive, but it might as well be, given how active its nervous system is. Pour soy sauce over the body and it will start to wriggle and shake. That's because the sodium in soy sauce activates the tentacle's neurons, which have not yet shut down, to come alive. These neurons stimulate nearby muscles and cause them to contract, which makes it seem like your food is dancing around. So why on earth would anybody want to eat such a thing, you ask? To many, the sensation of eating something that's squirming inside your mouth is worth the night out, despite how, if you're not careful, it could be your very last night ever. That's because the still wiggling and contracting tentacles might just latch itself onto your throat as you attempt to swallow them. 
Quick reminder, the suction cups on these tentacles are incredibly strong. If it does this, you're likely to choke to death. Best to stick to calamari, in our opinion. Eating roast duck is normal. Eating duck eggs is also normal. But balut, which is an egg with a duck embryo inside, is just plain bizarre. This off-putting Filipino dish is prepared by taking a duck egg and fertilizing it for several weeks. After about three weeks, the egg sports a well-formed fetus, complete with feathers, wings, and a beak. They then hard-boil the egg and serve it to the hungry party, who eats the entire embryo straight from the shell. While you may be cringing at the idea, rest assured that balut is not a dangerous food unless you choke on the beak or something. You're essentially eating a combination of duck and duck egg after all, and gaining all the calcium and protein from both. What's more, according to local Filipino belief, balut is a great libido-boosting aphrodisiac. That's something to consider for your next dinner date. If you want to try balut, you don't have to worry about shelling out tons of money at a fancy restaurant. This is no rare delicacy, but rather a normalized snack you can buy almost anywhere in the country. Expect to pay about 12 bucks for a dozen balut or a dollar each. That's cheaper than a McChicken and healthier to boot. Everyone likes soup, but not everyone is likely to enjoy fruit bat soup. It won't take long to understand why. To prepare this so-called soup, which you mostly find in countries like Guam, you take a wild fruit bat and boil it alive. Then you place the bat in a bowl with some coconut milk and a few vegetables. Then you eat it. That's literally it. Did you notice the recipe doesn't include instructions like debone the bat or remove the bat's hair or behead the bat? That's because you don't do any of that. You eat the whole bat, wings, eyes, nose, brain, and anything else aside from the bones, and pluck the hair out of your teeth while doing so. Never mind that. When prepared this way, fruit bat soup sounds unbelievably bland. It's also unbelievably dangerous. Much like Odoridon, the fruit bat ends up on your plate immediately after dying. Unlike Odoridon, however, this was a wild bat that was only superficially cleaned prior to boiling. As such, it's still loaded with all the bacteria and parasites you may expect from a wild bat. Eat this dish and you're asking all sorts of deadly diseases you simply can't get from a nice bowl of alphabet soup. <laughs>